Hi, welcome. Today I would like to talk about uh, how you can do a strongly typed validation uh, in C Sharp using a library called Fluent Validation and uh, I'm pointing to that. So let's get started. Uh, basically to demonstrate what I've done is I've set up a, a, a program which will instantiate a new book and it gives three parameters basically the name of the book, the author and some date time and which is supposed to be a published date but in this case the published date is just an empty date. So let me uh, just kind of show you where uh, the class is. I have uh, a breakpoint so we'll be able to see what the constructor in the class does and it's pretty straightforward. You can see it has assigned the name, uh, the author and publish date to this read only properties and that's pretty much what it does right now. So let's say you wanted to write some kind of a validation after this constructor has run or for that matter uh, some in, in some other case and uh, how would you go about uh, using this library. So let me just copy some code so it will save you some typing and uh, it's pretty straightforward and I will explain what it is. And I'm going to format the document so it looks good. So here uh, you can see what I've done is uh, I've called a class called book validator. This can be any name, but basically uh, you want to implement this uh, abstract validator and you give it a type, which is the name, the class you're trying to validate. In this case, the class book. And in the constructor for this class, uh, basically you can write your rules. And the way to write your rules is in a fluent style. So very uh, simply what I've done is I've written some rules. So I'm saying I'm writing a rule for the book, which is uh, basically a, uh, an object of this type. And uh, this rule applies to the publish date. So book dot publish date. And I want to say it is not empty or not equal to new date. And I've also added another rule that must. And here the condition for X is that X is whatever the publish date is should be greater than date time dot now. So I've added this rule and how would I go about invoking this rule in my program in any place you want. So let me copy some code to demonstrate that as well. Let me clean up this code a little bit so it's uh, very clear. So we basically will get our validator and uh, we will ask it to validate, uh, call the validate method and we give it the book. So it will validate the book. And uh, once it comes back on the result, we can watch a property called is valid. And we are going to print this over here to see what it does. And here uh, we are also checking if the result is not valid, how can you get all the errors? So on the result, uh, you would also have a property called errors and you can look at each of those errors and print them out. So failure the, uh, will also indicate what is the name of the property that is failing and also the error message. And we are going through a loop to print all of this. So let me just uh, run this program and uh, show you what it does uh, quickly. And uh, it should just take a second for uh, us to observe the error messages. So here you can see that it says is valid is false. And here, uh, the first rule it failed is publish date must not be equal to the empty date, which is what we had specified. So if you can look at that here, our rule was that it should not be equal to the new date time empty date. And the second is the condition was not met. The publish date has to be greater than this. The specified condition, it just says specified condition. And you can actually specify with message also in these things. So let me uh, show you one more thing I found to be pretty useful is that uh, sometimes when you're running these rules, uh, you don't want to run all of the rules if the first one has failed. So to do that, what you can do is specify what is called the cascade mode. And you can specify this at uh, several levels at the rule level, but I'm just going to specify that for now at the rule validator level uh, here uh, for this. And if I run this, now you would see that it would uh, basically stop after the first rule. So here you can see it is basically stopping after the first rule. So I and uh, there are many other things you can do is in terms of chaining rules and if you have a rule for uh, say this date time was a very complex object 
with many different things and you have different rules you could include all those rules in here so you to see all the built-in rules and details you can obviously uh, go to the documentation and like for example the built-in rules are here not empty not equal equal length validators and there are quite a few uh, validators email validators credit card validators even enum validators so I found this library to be a pretty useful library in your arsenal and it's very clean. It separates your validation code from your class in a separate class. So your actual logic is easy to understand and validation you can add in a separate class. So thank you for watching this short screencast. I'm going to add this to my uh, website under C-Sharp Fluent Validation. And you have a great day.